everybody my name is Mimi and today we are doing something new on the channel I'm so excited to introduce this so as you know if you've been following me for a while I like to do these yarn chat podcast episodes every month where I catch you up on what I've been working on um, what I'm starting the yarn I got projects I want to do all that good stuff and I missed the last month well, what's the last two months? I don't know. But within this time period since I've missed the last month, I've come to this realization that I'm too addicted to crochet and knitting. And for some people that's okay, but for me it's a problem. So I want to focus more on my art because I'm an artist. I love my art. It's very dear to me. So uh, we are renaming the Yarn Chat. We are rebranding, so it's no longer yarn chats anymore because we're not only talking about yarn anymore. This channel's not only about yarn anymore. It's about so much more. It's about my passions, and if you don't care, then just unsubscribe for me because really, it's it's not hurting me at all. I posted my first art-related video. It was like a vlog and a, like a painting time lapse, and it didn't even get like 50 views, and at first, I was kind of disappointed about that. But then I'm like, you know what? I made that video and it made me so freaking happy to make that video and to be able to post it and share it. And if only a few people enjoy it, then that's better than nothing. You know, even if I'm the only one that enjoys it, I'm the only one that matters really because I'm making these videos for my benefit because I want to be able to chronologue my personal journey as an artist, as a crocheter, as a knitter. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, so we are rebranding. So we are no longer doing yarn chats. We are doing crochet art diaries and this is episode one yes so this is the crocheted art diaries um so we here on crochet art diaries we're going to talk about crocheting we're going to talk about knitting we're going to talk about art we're going to talk about everything i've done throughout the month and just catch you up on it um and in this special is going to be really cool too because i actually got some plants in this special what i know i got plants i hardly ever buy plants um, but I bought some plants and I want to share them with you, so I'm super excited to do that. So yes, 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 because as you know, landscaping will always be my first love. Um, as much as I love crocheting and knitting, my heart is with the landscaping, guys. It really is with the plants. So, um, I'm saying all that nonsense just to say that we are now rebranding this is the crocheted art diaries episode one i hope you stick around i hope you enjoy it we're going to talk about a lot of things today one thing i haven't decided on yet though is if the crocheted art diaries is going to be monthly or every other month because it was kind of nice skipping this last month because now i have a lot to talk about um but at the same time i don't want it to be so much that i'm talking about that now we're, it's just so long and nobody's gonna watch that it'll be way too long it'll be way too long so I'm trying to decide is it gonna be monthly or every other month so if you have an opinion on that let me know I really appreciate it yeah I'd really appreciate it okay okay so first off what we have to talk about first thing we have to talk about this is my dress okay so okay so my sisters um I have two younger sisters and they wanted to do this fancy brunch for their first like official drink out you know since turning 21 so they wanted to do this fancy brunch where we get mimosas so we took them to brunch and the thing is they were buying these real they were buying selkie dresses guys do you know what selkie dresses those beautiful puffy yellow dresses they were buying selkie dresses okay and i was like oh my god what am i gonna wear i don't have anything to wear so i was like freaking out trying to find something to wear and then i was like i was on free people.com and i was like i saw a crochet dress on there and it was so gorgeous but it was like so expensive because it's like free people you know and I was like I can probably crochet my own dress so I did I literally I went because my local yarn shop now sells knitting for olive so I really want to try it so I ordered the pure silk I got um seven seven of them in the cream color so this is what my dress this is called the brunch dress she's got this jewelry right here that's made into the dress it's like this little pearl chain it's super cute it's like cups and then there's increases right here along the hips there's an open back design 
and I'm so happy and you can kind of see the length you can kind of see the length it's like thigh mid thigh it's not scandalous or anything but I'm so happy with how this dress turned out and I'm so excited to announce that I wrote a pattern for it the pattern is currently in testing um, the pattern testing starts on the 9th. Hopefully I get this video up by then. So the pattern is currently in testing. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. This is the first time I've ever written a pattern before, especially a size inclusive pattern because this pattern is not written based on stitch counts. It's written based off measurements. So as long as you know your measurements, you can make this pattern however big or however small you want it. And just to prove it, I also made the pattern a second time. <laughs> I made the pattern a second time for my younger sister, my youngest sister. She's a, so I'm wearing a size C, C cup, which would probably be around like a medium. So if you want to see, this is what the C cup looks like. So it's not, it's not for us. It's like if you're medium busty. I wouldn't consider myself like huge but I'm not like tiny either so this is the C cup this is what it looks like I made the A cup size for my sister so I would consider that a small and then an extra small would probably be like the double A cup so I made the size A cup or small for my sister so that she can try it out she has not tried it on yet because she's just been so busy she hasn't had a chance to try it on but I did finish it last night and it's here I made it in red for her because I had a ton of extra red yarn laying around that I had no idea what to do with. So this is it. It's super cute. I also, I made it as a top. So the pattern, when you buy the brunch dress pattern, it also comes with instructions for how to make it as a top. It's really simple. You just don't go the full length down. As if you were making a dress, you just stop. Instead of stopping, I think, at 43 centimeters to make the dress, you stop at 15 centimeters and make it as a top. So this is what she looks like can see the cup design it's got these pearls on it again um, the sleeve I really like these sleeves because the sleeves have increases but just along the top so it's like a ruffle sleeve but just along the top so there's the sleeve the detail oh sorry my phone is going off and then the bodice area has these ruffles again along the hips and the open back design with the straps to tie it in the back so that is her. So for this I use, um, like I said, the Knitting for Olive Pure Silk. I think I used 325 grams, um, which is a lot, especially considering Knitting for Olive is a bit more on the pricey side. But as an alternative, I also made this. So this one is actually made using Hobby's um, Rainbow Cotton. but. Honestly, I would suggest going for the baby cotton if you're going to get Hobby because the baby cotton is so much softer. The rainbow cotton was like, if I had to say like experience like out of 10, how was it to work with? I'd say maybe like a 5. Like it wasn't too soft, but it wasn't like super rough. But the baby cotton is so much softer, so I would say just go for the baby cotton. Um, so yeah, and that cotton is super cheap. It's only like, I think the baby cotton is like less than $3 for one. And I use five of them. Or did I use six? I can't remember. It's written in the pattern, though. <laughs> it's written in the pattern. I know it was like 936 yards to make this size. To make this size um, A cup small, it was 936 yards. Um, and this is using a fingering weight cotton yard. Yarn. Yeah, so... Um, so I had to finish this really fast, the dress, because... Um, we decided to do lunch on the 11th, but ended up getting pushed back to the 16th. Um, no, we decided to do lunch on the 16th, sorry. We decided to do lunch on the 16th, and uh, I had to have my dress finished by the 16th. Like, no way around it, it was had to be done by the 16th. So, I started at the end of April, so I ended up finishing this dress, I want to say, in about two and a half weeks. Two and a half weeks, and I had this whole dress completed. So... Um, you can do it if you are rushing to finish this dress 
it is possible I know because I've tested and I've done it myself so this whole thing took me two and a half weeks um, the top took me two weeks so it's very possible if you want to speed run this thing just because it's a fingering weight and the hook size is only 2.5 millimeter do not let that scare you if you want to speed run this thing you can definitely do it it works up pretty fast because this is all open and so is the back so really once you finish the cups the back and the sleeves you're like over halfway the only thing you have left is the skirt and the skirt goes by so fast once you start working on it you're just going around and around and around so anyway so those are the only two finished pieces I have for these two ones I've been all ah! I know that sounds bad but I literally I made a whole dress I made a whole dress and I made a whole top it was my own freaking pattern that says a lot that's a lot so it doesn't feel like it was a lot but it was a lot I promise it was a lot it felt like a lot when I was doing it <laughs> I promise it felt like a lot oh and something else I made I made like six bandanas okay so my sisters own a business and part of their employee uniform now is crochet bandanas made by yours truly so i had to make like six bandanas because they hired new employees and they all needed bandana yeah so i made a lot of bandanas this month so i don't have them because the employees all have them of course um but i made a lot of bandanas and i made this dress and i made my top so i got a lot done um, and I'm really proud of myself. Uh, okay, so that's all for finished pieces. Oh, the pattern should be released sometime in August also. So the pattern test ends, I think, August something. So look out for the pattern sometime around early September. Hopefully the pattern will be out by then. So, um this oh I didn't even mention the most important part so the most important part because of this pattern is I wrote I decided to start writing patterns is because there's this whole debacle that's been going on and you've probably heard it it's so old so old it's that crocheters don't use good yarn right and I've heard multiple people say this that crocheters don't use good yarn and I think that's absolute nonsense we totally use good yarn um, if you're a crocheter and you use good yarn, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I know there definitely are crocheters that mainly stick to acrylic yarns, um, but there's no reason to. If you want to experiment with um, yarns that aren't acrylic or more animal-based or more plant-based, like um, higher-end cottons or... Um, bamboo yarns then you should definitely give it a try but the whole purpose of me writing this pattern is because it's part of my new series my pattern series which I'm introducing now and that is we use good yarns too so we use good yarns too is mainly exactly how it sounds it's as crocheters we use good yarns too so I made this whole dress using knitting for all of pure silk which is an ethical silk yarn and I think that's a freaking awesome that I made a whole dress out of silk yarn which is so cool I mean and it's a crochet dress you don't see because here's the thing I went on Ravelry and I checked uh, pure silk knitting for olive to see what patterns had been made and there was like thousands of knitting patterns and then when it got put down to how many crochet patterns there were there was less than a hundred like it was so few it was so few I want to say it was I know it was less than a hundred put it that way like way less than 100 so and I feel like I want to bring more attention to the fact that you can use good yarns when you crochet so this series is me writing patterns using good yarns and they're all crochet patterns I'm not attempting to write a knitting pattern do not ask me to write a knitting pattern because I will say no okay I'm not ready for that type of pressure um, I don't have the skills, but I think I can finesse some crochet garments. So I've got another garment planned. Um, I'm hoping to, to do these patterns maybe like one every two or three months. Um, it just depends on what my schedule allows for. Um, I do have one planned coming up. I'm super excited to start. I've got the yarn for it. I'm so excited. I will share that in this video too, some of the yarn I got for it. I'm so excited to make this thing, guys. It's like, it's in my head. 
and I can't wait to get it like as a physical object because this was in my head and I've wanted it as a physical thing so bad I wanted it so bad and now it's like finally here and it's finished and it's beautiful and I love it I just I really can't stop looking at myself like I'm looking at myself in the viewfinder right now I freaking love how the sleeves turned out like they're like puffy just on the top I love the neckline I love the pearls oh my goodness I was talking to a friend um a subscriber friend and they were like oh yeah i really want to make the dress and i could see all these possibilities in it they're like oh do like a black velvet yarn with like a stud chain and i was just like oh my god i didn't think of all these possibilities so i was like oh because in my head i've only seen this dress in white i haven't even imagined people making it in different colors i have no idea what all the testers are going to come back with and i'm so excited for that i'm so stinking excited to see what the testers do with this pattern I'm so excited, especially the ones that are going to make it at the top, because I think this would be so cute with like jeans or like a mini skirt. It would be so cute with a mini skirt, like a tennis skirt. Oh my god, I can't even imagine. I can't wait to see how my sister is going to style hers, because I haven't even seen her try it on yet. So anyway, that is enough rambling about that subject. Okay, we can like let that die now. That was like a lot of rambling about nothing. I'm so sorry. That was so much. Okay. So on to works in pro progress. I literally only have two um, and one of them I've had for such a long time and it's the Nina top. It's the Nina top. I'm still working on it. I have hardly no progress but I did start back working on it again. I'm stuck on the skirt part and it's just taking me forever because the ruffles, there's so many ruffles, so many ruffles. I'm dying in ruffles oh my gosh look how far I've gotten I've gotten like not far at all can you see that can you see how far that is it's not far at all guys I literally only have like like a finger's worth I have a finger's length and I need a lot more finger's length so I really need to get to stepping on this project like real bad I really need to, to to pick up the pace on this I low-key so I okay so here's my problem with this one so I she was like in the pattern like oh you can work the skirt in single crochets or in double crochets and my first thought was oh I really want to do single crochets my second thought was I don't have enough yarn to do single crochets my third thought was but I don't really like how double crochets look and then I was like well what about half double crochets so I'm working in half double crochets and it's just not it's just not doing it for me it's like going too slow still so I feel like I need to unravel this and do it in double crochets and just suck it up because the skirt for this is in double crochets because I did not have time to do single crochets as much as I would have loved to do single crochets for this skirt I literally did not have the time so the skirt for this is in double crochets and it looks pretty good so I feel like I could probably get away with doing double crochets for this skirt and I'll probably still like it I just have to suck it up and unravel it and do it, but I don't want to unravel all my hard work, but I guess I'm going to have to. I guess I'm going to have to. So that's my one whip, and then my second whip is this gorgeous, gorgeous shawl that I'm making. It's a freehand pattern. Should I write a pattern for this? It's really not that deep. <coughs> Excuse me. So this is her. You can see she's got a little design in her. It's mainly just, um, is this double crochets? I think they're double crochets. And then a row of like skip one and then double crochet and chain space. But the yarn for this, guys, I've wanted this yarn for so freaking bad for so long. It's got like glitter in it. Please focus. Focus on the yarn. Focus. Hold on, watch this. I'm gonna make it focus. There we go. Can you see it's got glitter in it? And it's so stinking gorgeous. I wanted this yarn for such a long time and I was finally able to get it. Oh my god, it's so gorgeous. It's from my local yarn store. Yeah, from my local yarn store. Hold on, wait for the camera to focus again. So this is a shawl that I'm working on to pair with the dress because um, 
at my sister's place of business they're gonna do like an employee dinner and it's gonna be fancy themed so I'm going because I'm technically an employee there so I made this to wrap around me and to wear with my dress and I think it's going to look great did I make it too short please don't tell me it's too short okay it's like barely long enough it's long enough it's long enough it'll work I can finesse it anyway so that is what this is oh no I'm stuck yeah so those are my only two whips I've got no like that I've got two knitting whips technically but at this point I have not worked on them in such a long time they're not abandoned I promise they're not abandoned <gasps> wait I have three knitting whips okay one of them is low-key abandoned I just haven't worked on it in such a long time because I'm stuck on body island and it's just taking me forever and then the second one I'm also stuck on body island and that one is more of a winter piece and I'm just not motivated now that it's summer outside I'm just not motivated to do either one of those because they're both one is a cardigan which is like a bulky weight cardigan like why would I want to finish that right now in the summer I just don't and then the other one is the chamomile tea and that one's not per se a summer garment but it does have a strain of mohair in it which makes me feel like not summer it's more fall it's more winter because it's got that mohair in it and I'm just not feeling it so I just cannot go back to those two pieces right now I just can't I can't and then the other one is the um Camazon number two by my favorite thing to knitwear I probably should finish that like I really should and I just really need to finish that to be honest I really need to like get to step in on that book because that is a summer piece and I wanted to make more of them but I just I just can't do it <laughs> so sorry so sorry I, just, I really need to finish that um and I think those are all of the whips that I have all of my current whips yes so on to um the art side so let's talk about art finished pieces so finished pieces for art wise um, I did the piece in the painting video that we saw in the art vlog and that is the hand study so let me grab it right quick I literally just finished it when I say just finished it I literally mean just finished it because I really need to add the lines and the nails because my nails have lines in them and then I didn't add the rings so I had to add those two things and then the painting is done and I'm looking at now and it's so stinking gorgeous there's like two major mistakes that are killing me but I can't do anything about it now because I just waited too long and the paint dried so this is the painting let me manual focus her hold on can we see that so this is her she's so stinking cute those are my hands guys those are my hands those are my nails those are my rings you can see up close you can see every little detail it looks really good I'm not gonna tell you the mistake maybe you can just find it yourself figure out what the mistake is but there's one mistake that's killing me yeah but these are a study of my hands my hands my nails have changed um yeah my nails have changed since then hold on let me show you what the so this is the reference picture you can see what we were going for and I think we achieved it pretty well yeah I think it looks pretty good um, if you want to oh I just stepped on my cat's tail so glad that he did not scream okay so if you want to see more of a time lapse for this painting and how this painting came to be in the world then check out my art vlog it's the last video I posted there's like no views on it it's so hard not to miss it's like the eyesore of the channel right now so go watch that video if you're more interested in this painting um, yeah so that is her I'm so proud of her this is literally the first painting I've made in like 
six months which is crazy that I went six months without painting like because painting for me painting gives me like this high like the I was trying to explain it to one of my crochet friends and I'm like, you know that feeling like when you're crocheting and you're like freehanding and you're just like going for it and you're in the vibe, you're like, you're in the zone, you're vibing. Like imagine that like times 10 and that's the feeling that painting gives me. Painting gives me such a freaking high and I love it and I can't believe I literally went so long without painting because painting is my pride and joy and I, I missed it. I can't believe I missed it. And I didn't paint for such a long time. That's crazy to me. So, put her back on the easel. On to, so, so I don't really have per se works in progress of art, but I do have my sketchbook. And my sketchbook is kind of like works in progress because they're unfinished pieces. So, I can really only show you like two. I guess two would be considered works in progress. So, and these paintings both need names. So these are sketches of paintings that will be paintings in the future, but right now they're just sketches. And they, they, need, they need to get on the canvas. They need to be real things. So I'm gonna work on that. So this is the first one. I don't have a name for these yet either, so please help me with the name. Is that focused? There we go, kinda. So this is a woman, obviously this is a woman with her back to the camera. She's got really big curly hair and she's got her hands in her hair and her hands are in her hair and she's got like butterflies coming out of her hair and flowers coming out of her hair and it's like all in one and she's in the water she's in the water too so this is water down below and there's like flowers floating on the water there's these clouds in the background it's just such a relaxing scene the colors for this painting are going to be green lots of different shades of greens and pinks greens and pinks and this painting is a a collage of two other paintings that I have currently and I want to collab collaborate them and make one painting out of them so if you have any ideas for a name for this piece let me know um, there's still plenty of time to name it though I still have to paint it I think this will be the next piece that I paint to be honest it'll probably be this one because I really want to see it. I really want to see what it looks like and what kind of life she takes on. Okay, so my second one is this. And it's kind of hard to see. It's kind of hard to see. I'm so sorry. But, hold on. Maybe if I, if I darken this up with this pen right quick. I'm like sketching over top of my sketch. This is why these sketches are works in progress still. Because I can... <laughs> I have the freedom to finish them as I please. Okay. That's a little better. So, this is Over the Bridge. I think it's going to be called Follow Me. So, the whole scene of this is it's just this really peaceful, serene, um, sorry, it's raining. Can you hear the rain? It's this really peaceful, serene garden. It's got this red bridge. The bridge has to be red. In my mind, it's red. It's going over top of this. I'm not sure if it's going to be a dry riverbed or if it's going to be an actual stream. I'm not sure yet. In the back here, we have some crepe myrtles. Uh, Lagerstromia uh, four eye fantasy. So these are fantasy crepe myrtles, the red ones, the ones you see with the red bark. I guess they could be indica. I'm kind of either or on it. I don't mind indica crepe myrtles. Um, they're just different types of trees. Um, they've got like this sage green type of canopy, which I think is going to be absolutely stunning. And the focal point of this piece is going to be a yellow butterfly that goes across the bridge as if the butterfly is calling out oh follow me across the bridge so that's what this painting is going to be I'm so excited to see this one too um, this painting I'm so excited to see it I just can't wait um, I think these 
this crepe myrtle is going to be gorgeous. I got to get the bark just right on it or I'm not going to be satisfied because crepe myrtles have some of the most stunning bark. And if I do not paint it correctly, I'm going to literally murder myself because I just can't get it right. <laughs> Also, I want this bridge to be perfect. I want the butterfly to be perfect. I want everything in this picture to just look so... Yeah, I just want everything in this painting to look so serene and perfect and beautiful. Okay, so my next sketch... Okay, you're really not going to be able to see this because it's a pencil drawing. Can you see that? No, you cannot see that at all. Okay, so we'll just skip over that one. But that one's going to be called Iris. And it's going to be gorgeous. It may not be called Iris, actually. I'm not sure yet. Oh my goodness, can you hear the rain? It's gotten so dark outside because it's raining. I'm so sorry the lighting is so terrible in this video. I'm so sorry. Okay, so on to... Okay, so this is Crochet and Art Diary. So we talked about crochet, we've talked about art. I think we're going to talk now about the yarns that I've gotten within the last month or so and then we'll talk about painting supplies that I've got like going hand in hand like okay things I've finished things I'm working on supplies I've gotten yeah this makes sense to me so okay yarn I've gotten I've gotten a lot of yarn okay not all of it by on purpose but I have acquired a lot of yarn recently, which is so bad because I'm trying not to buy yarn. I promise I'm trying not to buy yarn. There was even a, a fiber fest and I didn't go. That says a lot, right? Like I'm really trying. There was a fiber fest and it was so close. Okay, it wasn't that close. It was like three hours away, but that's close enough. It was still in my state. So I don't know why I didn't go, but I just didn't go. So anyway, so a lot of yarn I got for international, not international, um, local yarn store day. So I got a lot from there and then I got some yarn just that I got. So one of the yarns that I just got is this Knitting for Olive Cotton Merino. This is in the color Soft Rose. And it's this beautiful, beautiful yarn in this soft pink color. And this is going to be my anchor tee by Petite Knit. If I can ever get around to it, it seems like all of my knitting projects I don't seem to finish. So I don't know what that says about me as a knitter. I just can't finish any knitting projects, but I can finish the crochet project easy. So if there was a crochet version of the anchor tee, I would make it so fast. I would literally make it so fast. If anyone knows of a crochet anchor tee version, hook me up in the comments. Seriously, do it. So anyway, so I got this. It's so soft and it's in the most perfect pink color. I love it so much. Um, and then I got this t-shirt yarn. I ordered this from Amazon. This is from the Fox Yarn Company. It is in the color, I think it's just red. Yes, it's just red. Um, I got this to make a bag with. I want to make one of those puff stitch herringbone bags that everyone has and I don't and I want it so I'm gonna make it so I got this for that this is also to go with my Nina top and my love mosquito shoes um, that's gonna be a whole look yeah that's gonna be a whole look you're not ready for me yet you're not ready for me I'm not even ready for me because I haven't even finished the freaking Nina top or the bag I haven't even started on the bag yet now I'm talking about the look already man I'm ahead of myself Okay, so very, very quickly, I'm going to run through the yarns I got for your local yarn shop day, but I did go through all of these yarns in my episode, my vlog. So I'm going to go through these really quick. Okay, first I got this Rowan Patina. Let's focus the camera. Okay, so first I got this Rowan Patina. Um, it's a glitter yarn. I wanted it for so bad, but I couldn't get it because it was so expensive, but it was on sale. So I got it. Then I got this Rowan Soft Clay. Also wanted this, but it was too expensive, so I never got it, and it was on sale, so I finally did. And it's like a boucle yarn, and it's super soft. Then I found this. It was on sale, and I just couldn't walk past it because it was only $6, and it's, um, 74% baby alpaca, 26% mulberry silk. 
and it's just this lace weight it's really nice i'm gonna add it as a second yarn to something i don't know what yet um got this it was not on sale but i wanted it actually no this was on sale this is sophia cashmere by trendsetter yarns um it's cashmere it's super soft i got two of them don't know what i'm gonna make with them and then i got oh that's everything in this bag okay let me check the second i know there's more i know there's more just gotta find it yes so i got this knitting for olive um, this is Knitting for Olive Soft Silk Mohair in the color Unicorn Purple. And this is what I'm talking about when I said I was going to make my next episode of the We Use Good Yarns 2. My next pattern I'm going to write is going to use this mohair in it. I'm not going to give too much away, but it does have this purple mohair in the project. And I think, okay, I'm missing something, but I have no idea where it is. I literally have no idea where it is, but it was this linen. I got this linen yarn, and I got something else too. I think I got another pink yarn, but I can't find it. My yarn stash ate it. Yeah, I can't find it. My yarn stash ate it. So we're just gonna have to, if you wanna see everything I got, just go back and watch the vlog, because I don't have time to do for it. Okay, so then my friend Rochelle, my lovely, lovely friend Rochelle from Queen's Yarn Boutique sent me some yarn. She sent me so much. Guys, look at all this yarn she sent me. And it's my favorite fiber, alpaca. And that's why she sent it to me because she knows I love alpaca and she's just the best friend you could ever have. Best yarn friend you could ever have. She's such a good yarn friend to have. Friends that send you yarn are such good friends. Okay, so this is the Via Lana by Knit Crate in Dusk in the color sanguine it sounds like a pasta or maybe a wine anyway it's this red lovely soft i think it's a dk weight yes it's a dk weight and i got two of them and i got no idea what i'm gonna do with them and then also this is Audine Wool's Flannel by Knit Crate. This is in the color Slate, also DK weight, and these are 47% Surya Alpaca, 38% Alpaca Wool, 15% non superwash Merino Wool. So I'm thinking with these two, and these two, I'm going to make some type of color work vest maybe? I don't know. I've got, I've got a lot. I could definitely do some type of color work vest. Um, or color work sweater or something color work because I've got I've got these both and they're both DK weight and they they work really well together so I should probably try and use them in the same project right but the thing is I like never do color work ever I'm like afraid of color work I'm so scared of color work guys and um i don't know why i'm just really scared of color work so if you know any very easy beginner friendly color work projects that use a dk weight yarn that i could use then you can leave them in the comments below so and then also for rochelle i got these yuru yarn by knit crates Butter, and this is in the color Butterfly Pea Flower. It's 45% Huakaya Alpaca. I just realized I filmed a whole bunch of stuff of me talking and I did not have the record button pressed. Like, what? So let's go back over that. So the last thing you saw was me talking about these two purples here. And these are her. She's just a really nice solid purple. She's got some reds in her, some Stellina. She's really nice and soft. And I'm gonna have to figure out what in the world to do with them because I've got two of them in there. It's only a little over 100 yards. So I'm gonna try and figure out what in the world to do with 100 yards of yarn. So any ideas, let me know. So on to the next, so we talked about yarn I got, now let's talk about art supplies that I've got, and then we'll talk about plants that I've got. 
So art supplies I've got, I pretty much shared all of the art supplies that I got in my last vlog. So if you want a more in-depth um, description of what I got, then go watch the vlog. Um, but I'll show you my quick favorites of everything I got. So my quick favorite is one, of course, my easel right here. I love my easel. I love her so much. She's adorable. I'm looking at her right now. She's gorgeous in every facet and every form. I love her so much. Um, my second favorite thing I got is this pale gold yes this pale gold paint by Gamblin. It is super gorgeous. I actually painted my thumb um, gold but you can see it right here on my it's like metallic can you see it? it's metallic you can kind of see it's metallic and then the favorite brushes I got because I got a lot of brushes too are these two right here these two brushes so this is a liner on this side and then this is just a really small round. I really like these two brushes. I got them from Michaels, I got them on sale, and I got a discount, so that's always good. So those really quickly. So that was a really, really condensed version of the art supplies that I got. Yeah, that was really condensed. Um, so if you want to see the full video, then just go watch the vlog. Um, so I said we were going to talk about plants that I got. So I have a really small greenhouse. Um, it's from Ikea. It sits on my, uh, in front of my window because um, in front of my window there's a porch. So I can only get so much sun because the porch really blocks out a lot of the sun. Even though we face southwest, so there technically should be sun all day but it really does get blocked out from the porch so uh, my room is low light so I really wanted an orchid because orchids do really well in low light so um, I really wanted a pink orchid and my sister bought me a pink orchid as a gift and I absolutely love her so let me show you right quick <laughs> this is her This is her. She's really beautiful. She's got these lovely orchid flowers that you only see in an orchid. It's just so exotic looking and every time I see them it makes me think about the airport in Singapore. If you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. And also in this there's a bromeliad growing up right here. There's a little bromeliad. It's like purple. You can kind of tell it's purple, but in the video it just looks black. But there's a purple bromeliad coming up right here. Um, I would have never thought to pair a bromeliad with an orchid, but they work really well together. I'm assuming the bromeliad likes this type of sphagnum moss that it's in. I hope it does. If not, then this is not a good arrangement at all. But I'm assuming that they do like this type. It seems to be doing well. It's got a couple of dry spots on it, but nothing too crazy. And then I got this for myself. I got this Nephrolepis. I don't know what type of Nephrolepis this is. Um, Exalta. Nephrolepis Exalta. It's a fluffy ruffle fern. And um, I really like her. I hope that I can keep her alive because I've had a maiden hair fern in the past and I killed it, unfortunately. So I hope this one is a little bit easier to take care of. I have heard maiden hairs are a bit fussy, so I'm not surprised that it died on me. Uh, it was still sad, but it happened, so we gotta get over that. But this is the Nephrolepis Exalta. Super cute. I really like her. Hope she stays healthy. Okay, so I have a friend. Oh. Okay, so I have a friend that's graduating, and she's graduating. Um, 
and I wanted to get her graduation gift and she really likes plants so I was like okay cool I'll get her a plant so I was trying to think what plant to get her and she's kind of like in a small room living situation so I can't get her anything big so my first thought was Monstera Deliciosa that was my first thought because that's the cool person plant you know what this plant looks like I'll put a picture of it right here but every cool person has this plant this is just a cool person plant for some reason all the cool kids have those plants so my sister has one too of course so I really wanted to get her that but you know those get really big and I didn't know if she has the space for it in her room so I was like Monstera Addisoni perfect it's so Monstera Addisoni is a hanging Monstera and it's still a Swiss cheese plant um, it's got the gorgeous Swiss cheese plant leaves, but it's hanging variety, so you can hang it up and it will just grow and it's beautiful. So I went today to the nursery and I asked the lady, I said, excuse me, do you have any Monstera Addisoni? And she was like, no, we don't have any, we only have Deliciosa. And I was like, rats. So I was like, what am I going to do, what am I going to do? So I was just walking around. And I was right about to leave, and then something just told me, look up. And I looked up, and there was one Monstera, Monstera Adesane, and I found the only one that she had. I literally looked around, and that was the only one in the store. So I was so happy because she said, oh, come back on Wednesday, but I didn't have to feel like having to drive all the way back up there next week, and I kind of wanted to give it to her tomorrow. So I'm so happy that I got it, and let me show you right quick. It's super cute. <laughs> gorgeous on camera oh my gosh she's so gorgeous okay look at these leaves just look at these leaves can you see that can you see how gorgeous those leaves are they've got like the Swiss cheese plant oh my god it's just so gorgeous this is the cool person plant like seriously if you have a Monstera Deliciosa I'm gonna say something I'm gonna say something in the plant community that's like divisive but if you have a Monstera Deliciosa you're here on the coolest level if you have this a Monstera Adesani you're up here okay Monstera Adesani is cool person only plant because for one most people don't even know what it is so I think that just makes it even that much more cooler because it's such an uncommon plant and it's just not commonly seen like I I don't think I've ever seen another like plant person talk about monster at a sign before which is crazy because i love this plant so much and i really hope that my friend likes it too i think she will i went to the dollar store and bought a big bow to put on the on the top right here i think i'm gonna put it right here on the hook so i think i really hope she's gonna like it i think it's the most gorgeous thing i've ever seen i'm just in love with these leaves oh my god they're so gorgeous i just can't stop looking at it in all of its glory and it's got like the most perfect habit like it kind of like sprawls out like it doesn't hang straight down it like goes out and like protrudes that way i kind of want to ask her if i i kind of want to take a cutting of it before i give it to her <laughs> would that be bad if i just cut this part right here if I just cut this and like propagate it for myself, she'll never know. She'll never know. I might do that. Oh, that's such a good idea. I'm going to do that tonight because I, I really want these one of these for myself. That's so cute. And when I get in my apartment, I will have room and I won't have a porch in front of my window. So I'll actually have some good light to grow plants. So this will make the perfect plant for me. Oh, Jackie, if you're watching this, I took a piece of your plant. I'm so sorry. But I had to. I had to. Okay, so I think that pretty much brings everything to a close of what I had I wanted to talk about today for the Crochet Art Diaries episode one. And I think this was a great first episode. We talked about crochet, we talked about art, we talked about plants. Um, we talked about the brunch dress, we talked about the brunch top, um, so look out for those coming out soon. And if you want to test for my next pattern, then follow me on Instagram because that's where I post everything. So um, check out my Instagram, it's Mimi underscore Rie. 
um, yeah, check me out there on Instagram. I post about when all of the patterns are coming out to test and all things like that are going to be posted there. So, um, thank you so, so, so much for watching. Um, thank you for, if you're here, thank you for being here and thank you for sticking with me while I'm trying to figure out this transitioning period on my channel so I'm not just only a crochet channel anymore because I want to be so much more than that so thank you for sticking around and watching um, I really appreciate you guys thank you so much bye